We were talking earlier about the USMCA and its uh, likely ratification. I mean, how much of a win is this for farmers in your state? Very good, and I probably will be duplicating some of the things that uh, my friend uh, Governor Vilsack uh, told you, but very good for dairy products into uh, Canada, very good for our quality wheat into Canada. We've been blocked out of that for the last uh, quarter of a century or three decades, so that's a big move. Uh, the other thing is uh, uh, what it does for employment. Uh, in rural America, we have a lot of component part manufacturers for automobiles in Iowa, and a lot of those uh, may have uh, farmers that also work in town. Uh, I know there's a lot of that goes on in my state of Iowa. Uh, those workers will be enhanced as a result of this treaty as well. Uh, Mr. Chairman, it, uh, on one hand, you've got USMCA. On the other hand, you have uh, the U.S.-China Phase 1 deal. Uh, suggestions that there's going to be massive more agricultural purchases made. How's that going to impact you? And are you skeptical at all about how the Phase 1 is going to be enforced? Okay. Well, uh, first of all, last Friday was a very big day for the President of the United States. That's uh, is the first president in a long time making trade, uh, unfair trade, the issue that he ought to make it. And I think he uh, had two big accomplishments last week. Uh, you know, we talk about intellectual property, trade secrets, not manipulating their currency, uh, transfer of techn technology to China. Those things uh, are going to be a little harder to measure. But to answer your question, uh, when China says they're going to buy to 40 to 50 billion dollars of agricultural products, uh, that's going to be easy to measure. So we're going to know pretty soon whether or not they're taking that secret, if uh, uh, taking that uh, uh, t to heart. So let's uh, go. Another agreement that was made uh, uh, announced Friday is that there's going to be a state-to-state -state, uh, intervention. Uh, by the, uh, uh, by the uh, American business in China, including our agriculture products, if we aren't treated fairly, that there's going to be a consultative process that doesn't exist today where uh, I, uh, U.S. businesses and farm groups can complain to the USTR here in Washington, D.C., can intervene for them with the government of China. Senator Grassley, how close is Mitch McConnell to setting the rules for impeachment and how it progresses in the Senate? Okay, there, uh, obviously I can't answer for sure, but I can say you what the process is going to be uh, and how far down this process, I don't think we are very far yet. But there's going to be a great deal of consultation between McConnell and Schumer to see if what happened in the Clinton administration can be repeated for this impeachment. And that was a vote of 100 to 0, in other words, complete bipartisanship on how you ought to proceed. Uh, those uh, those uh, talks will have to go on between McConnell and, uh, and Schumer. And then if those are not fruitful, uh, assuming Republicans have a majority, and we have 53, but we got to have 51 votes to accomplish this. Uh, we may have to go ahead on our own, but that's not the way McConnell wants to do it. McConnell wants it to be very smooth as it was uh, back in the Clinton uh, impeachment. And briefly, Senator, when does USMCA get signed, given that this is about to start? Uh, it, I, I would guess from my talks with McConnell that it'll be up immediately after. Uh, the impeachment is over. In other words, the president's guilty or not guilty. And there's a feeling that they haven't made a very good case yet. So he may not be guilty. It could still take a long time to make that determination. But when that's over, we will take it up. And there's a limit of 20 hours of debate. Uh, and it can pass with 51 votes. So we don't have to worry about getting a supermajority. We don't have to worry about cutting off a filibuster.